Good morning. Good morning to those that are in the house, and good morning to those that are on social media. At this time, we're going to go before God in prayer. How many of you know that prayer changes things? Amen. Amen. And we need to be vigilant in our prayer life. Amen. So let us go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you and praise you for the day. I lift up word of faith and everybody on social media before you. I thank you for those that are here. I thank you for those that are coming. And I thank you for those that are coming on more that are coming on social media. For that, I thank you. Father God, I thank you and praise you for that relationship with you, themselves, and others. I call it prosper in the name of Jesus. For that, I thank you. I thank you and praise you that all the needs are met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. For that, I thank you. I also thank you and praise you that for their health, for Christ himself took their infirmity and bore their sickness, and by whose strife they were healed. For that, I thank you. I also thank you and praise you for the service today. I thank you and praise you for the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will move mightily today. Uh, sanctify this service today, Lord, with your anointing and with your power. Father God, I thank you and praise you for the speaker today and the word that you had given to him for us today. I thank you, praise you, that he was speaking boldly, unhindered, unchecked by any satanic or demonic force. For that, I thank you. Father God, I also thank you and praise you for the authority that you invested in me. Satan, I command you and your demonic force to leave this place right now in the name of Jesus. Angelic forces was just a ministry spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus to station yourself in the front and the back and in every entrance way of this place, protecting us from all hurt, hurt, harm, or danger. Father God, I believe that I receive that these command is being obeyed in the name of Jesus. For that, I thank you. Now, Father God, I thank you and praise you for those that need to be saved will be saved today. And those that, need, that are sick that need to be healed will be healed today. And those that are in bondage will be delivered today. And above all, that Jesus will be magnified. And for that, I thank you and I praise you and I consider it done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now for the announcement. Good morning, Word of Faith. How are you this morning? Happy 25th anniversary. Woo! <laughs> okay, so we have our Bible studies at 7 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday and our weekly equipping 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursday. We have Harvest of Laborers at 645 meeting on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, that's weather permitting, um, but they do meet at 30th in Keystone. The marriage ministry will be meeting August 14th at 5 o'clock p.m. and also on August 27th, so we would love to see you there. Um, our outreach event is going to be on August 27th. We will have food, booths, music, and fun, as always, from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m. in the parking lot. Um, that will be on 704 East 32nd Street. Just a reminder, today we have our meeting, our all-church meeting on Zoom at 4 o'clock. You don't want to miss this information. Happy birthdays to Michelle Scott on August 20th and Lady Stevens, August 24th. Happy birthday. <laughs> Do we want to sing our happy birthday song? Okay, you want to take the lead? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs>
We got a we got an extra singer today. There you go. But we want to. Um, Gonna let your hand go for a brief moment. It's gonna be okay. Okay. That's my niece right there. Yeah. Okay. But we want to introduce uh, Miss Destiny Fitzgerald. Um, who's? What you want to? Fitzpatrick. I'm sorry. I really, really apologize. Destiny Fitzpatrick. Um, she's the only child of a minister of music. Um, Destiny sang her first solo at the age of five. At the age of nine, she began attending the Gospel Music Workshop of America, where she was exposed to other creatives her age. It was then that a seed to minister to God's people was planted and started to grow. Over the years, she sang background vocals for other artists, but felt a pull to step out of the background and into the spotlight as a gospel artist. After running from her God-given purpose for so long, she has finally accepted who God called her to be and is using her voice for his glory. You guys want to welcome Ms. Destiny Fitzpatrick. Thank you, thank you. Praise, Praise the Lord, Destiny. everybody. Praise the Lord. We came to praise the Lord this morning. Celebrate. Yeah. I came to celebrate with you guys. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Amen, yeah. amen. At this time, we're going to begin uh, praising the Lord with the high praise. How many know what the high praise is? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I hear you say that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and stand with us and let's praise the Lord. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. And Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Well, he's worthy of all of our praise. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord is high above the heaven. Lord is high above the heaven. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven. The Lord is high above the heaven. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven. The Lord is high above the heaven. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven. The Lord is high above the heaven. And the glory above the nation. And the glory above We're the nation. We're gonna give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always. And other people say, Hallelujah! 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 The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And the glory above the nation. And the glory above the nation. The Lord is high. High above the heaven, the Lord is high above the heaven, and the glory above the nation, and the glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven, the Lord is high above the heaven, and the glory above the nation, and the glory above the nation. The Lord is high above the heaven, the Lord is high above the heaven, and the glory above the nation, and the glory above the nation. We're gonna give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always, and other people. Say hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah! 
you are the I am you are that's a powerful song right and just forget about the song the lyrics itself is like ooh, breathtaking sweet perfume amen this is the day the Lord has made so we want to rejoice amen it's a celebration amen 25 years right amen it's a blessing to still be standing this long you know and we're going stronger and stronger every single day. So we just give God the high energy praise, the high energy worship he deserves. Amen. I said that he deserves. Amen. So throw it up to him. Hallelujah. God, take 30 seconds. You just need 30. Thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning because you, you didn't have to, Lord. You didn't have to make us be here today, Lord. We could have gone into an accident, but you said no. You stopped it and you paid the way. Amen. So give God the high energy praise that he deserves amen hallelujah 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 the highest praise amen Woo. his eye is on a sparrow oh, praise the Lord. please i'm sorry thank you why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows fall? And why should my heart feel lonely? Oh, and yearn for heaven. And home yeah. when Jesus is my portion, yeah. a constant friend is He. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he, he watches me. I see because I'm happy. And I see because I'm free. He watches me. I sing because I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. And I sing because. His eyes on the sparrow, amen. His eyes on the sparrow. I know he watches over me, amen. Amen. Today we have a special guest speaker today. Uh, name is Minister Chad Scalf. I met him in Richmond, Indiana during my year out there. So many of you guys know that I was traveling to Richmond almost every day for an entire year as we had new business that uh, we opened up. And while we were there, I was blessed to be able to meet 
this young man of God. Now, he inspired me because of the, the outreach ministry that he has, that he has doing out there in Richmond, Indiana. And we spent some time, and often when I come back from drilling Columbus, Ohio, I try to catch up with him so that we can sit down and eat. And because I'm in uniform, he always pays. <laughs> so that's an added perk. But no, but this man of God has been a blessing to me. And we've had conversations and uh, challenge each other. And it's one thing when you all can sit down and talk with someone, and you may have a difference of opinion, but you do it in love. That's what matters, is when you do it in love. And so out of that respect for each other, our friendship and our relationship grew, and I appreciate him because we push each other because iron does sharpen iron. Amen? So I want you all to be encouraged and pay him as much respect as you all give. No, give him more respect because he's a guest in our house. Amen? Y'all know me, I'm just Coach Q. Y'all be like, oh yeah, this is Coach Q. All right, but this is Minister Chad Scalf, and he's going to come to you in the way that the Lord leads him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I, I came this weekend to be a blessing. And that's what our heart is, and you should always want to be a blessing to folks when you're trying to minister for the Lord. And uh, last night, just being around some of you and uh, enjoying the, uh, the kindred spirit that was there, uh, I felt at home within about the first few minutes and made some good friends last night. And uh, already in this worship service this morning, uh, I feel like I'm at my home church, and I'm just looking around, getting to enjoy you all worshiping the Lord. And uh, I love the fact that it doesn't matter where you're from, uh, what's going on in your life, uh, what background you have. Uh, we all could testify all day long, I'm sure, about where the Lord has brought us from. Uh, I feel like Moses. I got water on this side, and I got water on this side. And this, <clears throat> I got one young person over here, so I'm going to do this all morning. <clears throat> but uh, I know that I feel like that sparrow this morning, that I just know the Lord watches me. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I saw some folks worshiping the Lord. And I haven't thought about this scripture uh, in a minute, but I, I came through trying to get through this construction area over here and had to go around and we were worshiping the Lord. And I was just had my hands raised and worshiping God. And that scripture came to me and I thought about God already has a backup plan right over here next to the church. Just in case we fail to worship God and praise him, Jesus says, if you don't praise him, that the rocks are going to cry out and praise him. Amen. And so, you know, I don't know about you. There's times I've been going through things. And I can come to church and sit and, and I can cross my arms and look like I had sauerkraut for breakfast and pickles for lunch and, and do all those things. But you know what? We ought to praise our God. Amen. We ought to lift up his holy name. And I can promise you, when you begin to lift up Jesus, uh, your problems begin to grow strangely dim. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. I want to obey the Lord this morning. I just want to give honor to Pastor Quill and his uh, wife, Tennille. It's been wonderful to meet her and the family. And I enjoyed getting to meet Pastor Julius. If you weren't there last night, you'll understand why I'm saying this. He's Pastor America. And... Uh, <clears throat> If, if you weren't there last night, you'll, you'll not understand why I said that. You'll have to ask, okay? Uh, but, man, I laughed about that all, all night long. <clears throat> and uh, uh, just a good-hearted brother, him and his wife, so sweet. And uh, give honor to all the folks that are here, your labor and love for the Lord, helping this ministry. God bless you. Amen. Uh, I may only be here one time, I hope. It's not just one time, but if it is just one time, if we don't meet between now and the coming of the Lord, uh, would it be okay with you all if I just make myself at home and just minister to you? I, I can't be you and you can't be me. I, I started preaching when I was 16 years old. Uh, I preached out in the streets. I, I preached in uh, homeless shelters. Tonight I'll be preaching in jail. I have a homeless ministry. I've got a regular home church I preach at. And I can only be me. I can't be Pastor Quill. I can't be Pastor Julius. And I just got to be me. So I hope that's good enough. Praise the Lord. I like to read this morning out of 2 Kings chapter number 6. If you're healthy and able, please stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. I'd like to read uh, just a few scriptures. 
and uh, preach some, some thoughts that are on our heart. I, uh, I have to be honest, Pastor Quill, wherever you're at, bro, uh, when you asked, we were going to get together a couple months ago and some things came up and had things to tend to in the home church and couldn't come. And he asked us to come be a part of this uh, silver anniversary, 25 years. And at first, I just said, yeah, brother, be an honor, I'll come. You know, and then I got to thinking about it and I thought, Lord, I don't have a testimony to say what I've been with these folks for 25 years. I don't have a, I don't have a tear to shed. How many of you has had some ups and downs in 25 years? <laughs> I can't talk about any mountains I was on with them. I can't tell them about any valleys we went through together. And I had to be honest, I felt like maybe I ought not be here on this 25th anniversary until just a couple Saturday mornings ago, really early in the morning, the Lord began to just put some things on my heart about this church. Amen. And so I know uh, when the Lord begins to deal with you, I can tell you of a surety this morning. Uh, there's no place in the world I'd rather be than right here at Word of Faith Christian Church. Amen? Because I know the Lord uh, has something for you. Praise the Lord. Uh, 2 Kings chapter number 6. I'd like to read just a few verses, if I could please, uh, beginning at the first verse. The Bible says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Uh, the, I'm reading out of the King James. Too straight just means it's too small. Everybody say it's too little. We got to go bigger. Amen. Uh, it's too small. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thee thence every man a beam. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. How many are glad for a man of God that will go with you whenever you want to do something? Praise the Lord. Amen. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But one was felling a beam. The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee and put it out. He put out his hand and took it. Can we pray? Father, I thank you today, Lord, for already the prayer that our brother prayed so well, Lord, today at the beginning of this service, how we need your help and your strength and your safety. I appreciate that, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the presence of the Lord that's in this house, and I just pray today, God, that you give me direction that you take the thoughts in my mind, the meditations in my heart, make them acceptable, Lord, into your sight. And I pray that you feed your people, Lord, this morning. I pray, God, that people that came, Lord, if they're heavy, if they're discouraged, if they need uplifted, I pray today, God, for strength. And I pray for encouragement. And I pray for faith to be increased today. Lord, you said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God, I just pray that your word be true today. Make it spirit and life unto the hearer. And I rebuke, Lord, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And I pray, Father, Lord, that you have your way in this service in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. You can be seated if you want to. I, I, I've never preached on this text before. I've been preaching nearly three decades. I told you I started preaching at 16. I'm 44, so uh, it's been a minute, but I've never preached from this passage. And so I just want to tell you, uh, this is this is just special for word of faith. Can you say amen? And so I want to preach this morning about lessons about a lost axe head. All right? Lessons about a lost axe head. Verse number five, the scripture says that 
One was felling a beam. He was doing his part. All of these people out here with their ax and they were chopping down a tree and they were going to labor together. The place they were at was too small. They wanted a bigger place. And so Elisha said that you can all chop down a tree. You take your ax, you chop down this tree, you chop down this one, and we'll all chop down a beam, and then we'll have a place for us to dwell, and we can habitate there. How many of you know, word of faith, that every single one of you is important that's in this house this morning? Amen. I know what it feels like to come to church and we want Pastor Quill to do this and we want Lady Neil to do this and we're expecting uh, Pastor Julius to back up this and we're expecting for Brother to do this and Deacon this and Elder this and sometimes we need to come to the place where we realize in the kingdom of heaven, amen, the little finger on the hand is just important as the leg, amen, the right arm is just important as a left shoulder. It doesn't matter who you are today. You are important to Word of Faith Christian Church. Amen. We all have a beam that we need to fell. There's a tree that you need to cut down today. The pastor is praying for laborers to come to Word of Faith in this harvest field that we see in the world. We all have a job that we need to do. Amen. Uh, we need to labor together in unity. I can could imagine as they began to chop down these trees, I could imagine that there were some that said you need to hold the axe like this. Some said you need to chop the tree down here. Some said you need to chop the tree up here. You need to make the tree fall this way. Everybody has an opinion, don't they? Uh, but I want to tell you, as long as you're doing what you need to do for God, God will give you the ability to do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the one next to you may be doing, that person may be called to do something different, and you may chop left-handed, and this person chops right-handed. You may swing the ax down this way, and they may swing the ax this way. But I can tell you, as long as we're laboring together for God, and we're working for the Lord, he is going to be the one that gets the job done. Can you say amen this morning? And so here they are, they're chopping wood. Hallelujah. They're chopping wood and they're getting the job done. But this man, he, he swings this ax. And uh, I'm going to use a little bit of an illustrated sermon this morning, if that's all right. And this, this man, he begins to chop this wood. And all of a sudden, something happens. It has a different sound to it. He's already chopped this thing a hundred times. And he chops it. And all of a sudden, it seems like just a big dead thud at the end. And he looks up and he sees that the axe head is gone. He looks down at the river and he sees the axe head as it makes a splash down in the water. Can I tell you, when you're working for the Lord, it's one thing. If the axe head sometimes just falls on the ground and you can reach down and pick it up and you can put it back together. I believe God wants us to use our brain, don't you? Uh, aren't you glad Pastor Quill's got some good sense? He's a lot smarter than I am. He's got more degrees than a thermometer. Amen. I know he can get the job done with his head. But as, as smart as Pastor Quill is, there's going to be times in the work of the Lord that logic is not going to get it done. There's going to be times that our intelligence and our IQ is not going to get it done. If it would have fell over in the brush pile, if it would have been just fall over in the weeds, he could have picked it up and he could have put it back on the axe head and he could have kept right on the on the axe handle and he could have just kept chopping. Uh, but I'm here to tell you today, there may be some people in here that there's been times when you were just trying to labor for God. You were trying to do what God told you to do and things happen outside of your control and the axe head, the thing that you depended on uh, to get the job done, it just falls off and when you least expect it, uh, here goes the axe head and it falls in the water and you stand there with your mouth wide open 
and you begin to ask God, why did this happen? All I was trying to do was do a work for God. <laughs> Amen. I was here last night and I read and it parallels a lot of what happens has happened in my life. And when, when you're trying to do a work and this church has went from location uh, to a couple other locations and it seemed like God has given you guys a big footprint in this area. Uh, but can I tell you that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And you read in the book of Acts, they didn't just have one place. They all came every single Sunday for 25 years. Amen. Sometimes God has you move around in different ministries. Come on now. Is anybody going to help me in here? Amen. If God's moving you around, it must mean that he's got doors he wants you to walk through. If God's moving you around, it means he's got a path he wants you to go down. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes your axe head falls off and you're just swinging and you don't know how you're going to get it back and you don't know how you're going to get that sharpness back. Uh, but I want to tell you, amen, what I know about God is I cannot do anything on my own. I need God's help in my life. I need his power in my life. I need the spirit of the Lord in my life. I'm just swinging an axe handle. I need the power to be in my life. Amen. Some of you may be in here and right when you thought you were right in the middle of the will of God, crisis strikes your life. Maybe you lost a spouse when they seem to be healthy. Maybe you lost a son right in the prime of their life or a daughter. Maybe crisis happened and you lost someone or lost a job that you were dependent on. Maybe it just, have you ever felt, I'm here sometimes, have you ever felt right when you're in the middle of the will of God, it seems like uh, God just ought to whisper in your ear. And then when you pray, it's like the heavens are just like brass. And you're like, Lord, when I was in the valley, it was like we woke up every morning together and I could hear you speaking to me. And now that I'm on the mountain doing the will of God, it feels like you're a million miles away. Does God ever do any of you like that before? Hey, Amen. I want to tell you something. Hey, Amen. I believe that sometimes God has a way of making us go through some things where we realize we're swinging the axe handle. And just in case we get, we begin to get some vain glory in our lives. Life. And we begin to think that we're the ones doing the work. Amen. You, now, you all men know what it's like. If we was out there cutting down a bunch of trees, I guarantee you, Pastor Quill, he would say, I've chopped down three of these, and you haven't even chopped down one yet. Amen. You sense that in him too? He's a little bit competitive, isn't he? Amen. We have Bible trivia and he had his mouth full last night. Had to answer every question before I did. Amen. I appreciate that. Amen. Uh, you know, sometimes women have, have that, that drive. But I want to tell you men, hey man, you know what it's like. Have you ever uh, picked up folding chairs? And I was moving chairs the other day. I picked up one on my left hand, one on my right hand. And here comes my son. He's back here. Hayden, wave your hand. That way they know who you are. Hey Amen. It wasn't good enough. He had to have three in this hand and three in this hand. And he's walking around looking, seeing if any girls are looking at him. That's how, that's how we are sometimes. Hey Amen. Look what I'm doing. Look at all I'm getting done. Uh, let, me, let me show you something in God's word. You know why God waited till the sixth day to make man? If he would have made us on the first day, we'd have been walking around telling everybody, I'm the one that told God to make the grass green. I'm the one that told God to make the sky blue. I gave God the advice and said, make a fish and let him swim and make a bird and let him fly. I'm the one that told God, make mountains and make clouds and make, and make fruit. No, I'm gonna tell you something. We are quick to take the credit for things we do. You might as well just say amen this morning. Uh, but God has a, he has a way of helping us us realize right when we're getting the job done and we think we're doing a great job I'm going to tell you sometimes God he makes the axe head fall off our handle to remind us that without his power without his spirit without his anointing and without his touch we are nothing When that happens, we see hope sinking. 
Come on now. Am I going to help me preach this morning? We get out of our car. We put our church face on. We come into the sanctuary. Everybody says, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Blessed and highly favored. I, I, I'm, I'm naturally, I'm a melancholic, I'm a depressed person naturally. And so there's a church over in Richmond called Cornerstone Fellowship. And it's pre- predominantly uh, black folks, a few whites from the same spirit, same, uh, t- you know, just love it, love it, love it. I go into Cornerstone, I walk in, they say, hey, Brother Chad, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Man, they, they grab my hand just like this, Pastor, and they say, hang on a second. <laughs> That ain't good enough around here. We're not doing just pretty good. You're blessed and highly favored. Amen. It took me about two or three times there. Now when I see them, I know what I better say. If I'm having a good day, I'm blessed and highly favored. If I'm having a bad day, I'm blessed and highly favored. If I'm going on a mountain, I'm blessed and highly favored. If I'm in a valley, I'm blessed and highly favored. Amen. Ah, but lessons from the lost axe head when, when we lose this. Amen. I'm going to tell you what I, ha- what I have a tendency to do. I have a tendency to look around and I begin to think, well, I can't admit what I'm going through because these other boys are still swinging their axe. This guy over here is still cutting down his tree. This person over here is still doing what they need to do. And here I'm holding this, this stick in my hand and I've got a decision to make. I want to tell you what the first lesson of that losing the axe head that you need to learn. You have to admit when you've lost the axe head. Amen. You need to admit when you need help. You need to admit, amen, when things aren't right, right and like they ought to be. My Lord, help me preach a little bit this morning. Amen. Can I remind you that God does not call those that he equips, but he equips those that he has called. Amen. There's so many people that say this is my church and this is my ministry and this is my jumbo jet. Come on now. Don't fall out with me here. Amen. This is my dot com ministry. Amen. This is what I built. This is the kingdom I built. Uh, Can I tell you without the power and the spirit in the anointing of God. I'm going to tell you why we have so many frustrated churchgoers in America today. The reason why is because we're swinging axe handles and we're beating on trees, but the trees ain't falling down. You might as well help me while I preach. We're going through emotion and there's no might. We're using a lot of energy, but there's no effectiveness going on. I want to tell you what we need as a body of Christ is to pray and say, God, give us the power again on the edge of our axe handle that when we swing it we're effective when we do something for God it's not me but it's the power that God gives me to get the job done amen we're listening to the sound of axe handles beating on trees but we're not hearing the sound are y'all listening to me this morning We're not hearing the sound of trees falling around us. We're content with just going through motions of social church networking. And we're content with just trying to build numbers and counting numbers. And when I say we, I ain't talking about, I'm sure there's none of those here in Indianapolis. They're all over there in Richmond. Amen. Uh, We're just counting nickels and counting noses. And uh, we're just worried, amen, uh, uh, about uh, uh, how we're promoting things. Uh, Amen. You might as well help me while I preach. Uh, Amen. We got axe handles that are flying around, uh, all around us, and they're beating on trees. And I could tell Pastor Quill, amen, look at this new axe handle I got, bro. It's contoured down here. It's it's weighted here. It fits my hand just right. I can even varnish this and stain it any color that I want it to. Amen. Church in America, we got a bunch of fancy axe handles, uh, and we're swinging in vain. You say, Brother Chad, I need some 
scripture. I'll give you one. It's in Psalms. And it says, except the Lord builds the house, then them that labor, they labor in vain. I want to tell you, I love programs and I love ideas and I love using my brain and my logic. But what we need and what I need in my life, I need to get down to business with God and say, Lord, I need your spirit in my life. I need your anointed touch in my heart. I need a deeper walk and a greater experience that I can get some things done in my life. Amen. Some people say, I'm a Paul. Some people say, I am of Apollos. Pastor Quill could say, I've got Pastor Julius that mentors me. I've got so-and-so, these fathers in the faith, and I'm of these guys. And I've got those people in my life, and you should have those people too. Amen? That mentor you. You ought to respect your elders and your deacons and your bishops and all the saints of the Lord. Amen. But I want to tell you something. Paul said, who is Paul? What does that really mean? Who am I? Who is Apollos? He said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 3, he said, you're yet carnal. All right, can, can, you, can you bear some preaching this morning? Is this okay, Pastor Julius? Amen, Paul said, you're still carnal. Amen, I hope that doesn't offend you. Amen, but you gotta realize you can still come to church every single Sunday, and you can come to Bible study, and you can have a good intention, and you can still live a carnal life if you're not given over to the things of the Spirit. Amen. And you can say, well, I follow Paul or I follow Apollos. Uh, but I want to tell you, amen, there's envy and strife in the body of Christ. And there's divisions. I appreciate word of faith's vision in their mission statement that says we don't care what background you come from. We're in a church this morning where Jesus Christ has the preeminence. And it doesn't matter what religious background you're from. We're here to give Jesus all the glory. We're here to build the kingdom of God. We're not here to build a, a denomination or a name, but we're here to lift up Jesus. I love that. I love that. Amen. Because when there's divisions and envyings and strife, and everybody thinks they have the corner on doctrine and theology, let me tell you something. We're not going to figure it all out here at Word of Faith Christian Church. It don't matter how hard you try. But there's one thing we need to get figured out right here. That if there's anything that's going to be done, it's going to be because Paul plants Apollos waters and God gives the increase. Amen. 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 We got so many. Man, I'm going to get in trouble. Honey, go start the car. I didn't say, well, get a car. If there's a sports car out there, start it and pick me up at the side. I don't want to get in trouble on my first day at Word of Faith. You're going to run yourself crazy chasing around every prophet and every prophetess. Oh, my. You can run around like a church junkie if you want to. Chasing around the flavor of the month when it comes to you trying to find a word from God. There are a dime a dozen out there. But I'm going to tell you what you really ought to do. You ought to let yourself bloom right here where you're planted. And let your roots grow deep in Word of Faith Christian Church where you don't have flaky pastors. You don't, you don't, you don't have somebody running around, you know, have, hey, the Lord says this. Let me tell you something. There's some people that act like they have coffee with God every morning. I've not yet acquired that type of spirituality. But I tell you what I have acquired before, and that is... When I pray and I get down on my knees and I humble myself before God, when there's no cameras, come on now, there's no video going, 
There ain't nobody running around. I don't have to run around telling everybody my prayer time. Jesus, there's a lot of people that's going to be empty-handed in heaven because they've already received their rewards because of all the boasting and promoting they've been doing here on earth. Oh, my, I'm off my message this morning. But Jesus says if you pray in secret, then God will reward you openly. If you want to get the ax head back on your handle, don't be telling it all over social media. Find yourself a place to pray and seek God and fast and pray until you know God's done something in your life and he'll bring that X head back up out of that water and you can reach out and get it. Amen? When you get down and pray, you're talking to God. Amen. Now, I believe in people speaking into my life, and I've got a few of those. Amen. But I want to tell you, you better know who they are if you let things like that in your heart. Amen. My, I'm here to preach to you today. Amen. Did not our master say, do y'all believe Jesus is coming back? Y'all believe in a rapture around here? Okay, good. I'm in the right place. Amen. Amen. The Lord's coming back. He's coming back soon. Did not our master say before he comes, uh, there's going to be many out there deceiving uh, and there are going to be false prophets that arise uh, and are going to deceive many. Come on now, help me while I preach. Uh, there's going to be some that give heed to seducing spirits uh, and doctrines of devils. Uh, you've got to be careful who you let speak into your life. You've got to admit, I lost the axe head. But you also got to get to the place where you have a man of God in your life and you go to the man of God and say, I admit, I lost my axe head. It doesn't do any good to throw it all over Instagram and Facebook and tweet about it so you can get 550 opinions on what you ought to do. You know what God wants you to do? You're his sheep. And he is our great shepherd. And he's put under shepherds in your life, and they're your pastors. In 25 years, I can promise you, Pastor Julius can give you pages of people that he tried to lead them to steal waters and green pastures, but they simply would not follow. You got to be willing to go to the man of God in your life and say, I lost it. And if he's really a man of God, you know what he's going to say? Sow a seed of $5,000 and a miracle is coming your way. <sighs> Sweetheart, we're all right this morning. I'm in the right church. In the book of Acts, they said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. But now the first thing they want to tell you is, silver and gold have you some. And such as you have, give unto me. Oh, I'm not, I'm not killing my message this morning. Go to a man of God that isn't all about the money and about the fame and the popularity. Come on. Let this mind be in you which was in Jesus Christ. Philippians 2. He made himself of no reputation. Are y'all listening to me this morning? You think Jesus walked up on the river of Jordan and said, well, everybody, here I am. No. He made himself of no reputation. He didn't think it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself lower than the angels. He humbled himself and became obedient in this life. Amen. That's the kind of person we need in our life to be like Jesus that says, here I am listening to you. I'm here to meet your needs. I heard this Pastor Emeritus say last night how honored that it was to serve this church in 25 years of anniversary. Aren't you glad he was faithful for almost three decades? <laughs> That's a man of God now. Amen. He pretty much admitted, I look for reasons to stay in Fort Wayne, but God called me down here. You know why? Because God put a man in some people's life in this area so that when you needed some things, he was here to give you something from God. And God will always give you a man like that. And then here, raise up Pastor Quill. Sounds like to me, he was just given the duty. I'm out, he's in. Sounds like God working to me. God don't need to sit down and talk about it for five years and 
Come on now, man. I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not dumb. I ain't going to get in that kind of trouble. Amen. But God will always put a man in your life that will have something for you when you're in the, dark, the darkest hour of your life. Oh, my, I lost my axe head. It's borrowed. I owe this axe head to my friend. It's going to cost me money. I don't, have, I don't have the money to buy it. I don't have the ability to restore it. And the man of God, if he's wise, here's what he's going to ask you. Where did you lose it at? Amen. Can I preach to you today? Amen. That there's people all around my life, and I see them in my community, that at one time had the favor of God, and they were walking with the Lord. And my, they had the goods. Uh, but something happened in their life uh, and they walked away from the things of God. Uh, and now their life is turning into ruins. Uh, and when they come and they talk to me, the first thing I ask them, how is your prayer life? Uh, where did you slack up on your praying? Uh, where did you quit your faith? Uh, Y'all might as well help me while I preach. Uh, we're living in a day where the blame game is being played. Uh, it's the pastor's fault. It's the church's fault. It's the deacon's fault. It's this person's fault. It's everybody's fault. But sometimes we ought to take inventory with the man in the mirror and say, God, I'm the reason I walked away from it all. Yes. Yes. Where did you lose the axe head? Maybe you slacked up on your church attendance. Well, I've been going to church for a long time. I think I can just take a break now and I know some people, y'all have any of these over here in Indianapolis? They are so spiritual, they only have to come to church about once every four months. It's amazing how spiritual they are. I mean, man, they're, they're so full. I'm going to tell you something. My wife, if I go two weeks without praying through, she's going to sit down. We're going to have a conversation. And she's going to look at me and say, hey, listen, when was the last time you really got in your prayer closet and pray. I'm thankful for my sweetie pie honey bunch that'll say that. Amen. Because, amen, sometimes I, I don't see what's going on. I don't see the attitudes I've taken on. I don't see the tendencies that I got going on. But we need somebody to look me in the eye and say, how's your prayer life? I've been preaching almost three decades and I've never had one person admit to me the reason I lost out with God is because I quit praying. I haven't heard that one time. I always hear, well, the church did me bad. I got into trouble and my feelings got hurt and nobody cares about me and they blah, blah. And it's just everybody's got a story to tell. But nobody ever says the real reason I lost my axe head is because I quit praying. But every single time I've ever seen somebody restored back to where they need to be, you know how they get it back? When they start praying. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Amen. When they start getting a hold of the Lord and stealing away with God. Amen. I'm trying to hurry. Lessons from the axe head this morning. You have to admit the man of God says, where did you lose it? Right here is where I lost it. We've got a lot of weary saints. We've got a lot of people in churches in America that are swinging axe handles. They have a form of godliness. You all admitted you believe we're living in the last days, right? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 3 gives us about 19 things in that list there of things to look for in the last days. Perilous times are coming. And one of them said there's going to be people that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. There's a lot of people that are going through a form. Look at my religion. Look at what our church does. Look at what our church believes in. Look at what our church doesn't believe in. Hello now. And we're swinging our axe handle. And man, we get that thing. So I'm going to make adjustments to my axe handle. And I'm going to swing this thing from down here. And we have another bright idea. And we're swinging axe handles. And the whole time God is saying, instead of seeking the axe handle, why don't you seek the head and the power that goes on the axe handle so that when you swing that thing, some things get done. You can't just have a form of godliness and deny the power. You can't just say, well, no big deal. Most people don't have an axe head anyway. And my axe, I've done enough. You know, I, I sure chopped down this tree. I put the hurt on it and I'm just going to keep, no. 
we got to get to the place where we once were. Remember the day, Pastor Julius, when people got saved and, and their attitude was, Pastor, what can I do to get close to God? You couldn't have enough Bible studies, could you? Uh, what, what do I got to do? What, what, what in my life, what can I do to stay close to God? Do I, I need to quit doing this? Do I need to quit doing that? Watching this, listen to that, look, go in these places? You know, any, nobody rarely even says that kind of stuff anymore. Whenever I'm trying to disciple people, their question always is, can I still do this and can I still do that and go to heaven? The attitude is, how much of sin and iniquity can I get by with and still have God's blessings on my life? I'm going to tell you something. I'm showing you. If you get a person like that, I'm showing you somebody that has an axe handle, but they don't have an axe head. And they can swing and swing and swing all they want, but they're not going to have the real relationship with God that they want until they get serious with being in the will of God. Can you say amen? I'm hurrying. Lessons from the axe head tells me this. I've already told you. You have to admit. That's lesson one. The second one is you have to go to the man of God and say, I lost it. Wait, go, to back, go back to where it was you lost it. Maybe 15 years ago. I see this. For some reason, I see this a lot. Maybe 15 years ago. Some kind of strife and division happened, and there was division and envy happened in the church, and you fell out with a brother or sister, and you don't love them the way that you ought to love them. That very thing will cause you to lose your axe head. Amen? You know what you need to do? Go to that brother and that sister and give them a hug and tell them, I'm sorry for the way that I have had strife in my heart toward you. strength and love your neighbor as yourself you do those two th things everything else just falls in line can you say amen here's the third lesson god doesn't need anything that you have to perform a miracle elisha said i'll tell you what i'll do i don't even need your axe handle the bible says elisha cut a stick imagine this now I would be offended. I really would. I'd be offended if I came up to you and, and you, were, you were the person in my life I need to talk to and I said, I want to give you this. This is what I got left. You can take it. Don't be afraid of it. Ain't gonna ask <laughs> and I said, you can have this right here. I'm proud of this. And she lays that down and goes and cuts a stick. Boy, wouldn't that be offensive? That would offend me. Because the things you bring to God to impress him and say, look what I've been doing. Look what I've got. The man of God just cut a stick off a tree and threw it in the water. God doesn't need anything that we've got to perform the miracle. But when we surrender everything we've got to God and lay it all down and say, Lord, you do it the way you want to do it. And God cuts a stick. Those that, and when he cut, could you, I wish I could have been there to see this. When he threw that stick in the water... But then all of a sudden, he sees something bubble up out of that water, and he sees a piece of iron, and he's looking at it, and he sees this axe head, and the Bible says it did swim. <laughs> Woo! Here's the last thing, and I'm going to hurry. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've went over time. I apologize, Pastor. He reached out, and he grabbed a hold of it, and that's what I came here to preach to you here at Word of Faith this morning. If God does a miracle for you and is right in front of you, God's doing some things, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone and you're going to have to reach out and you're going to, don't worry about falling in. Don't worry about getting wet. That may happen. Don't worry about looking like, don't worry about looking crazy. That ex head swimming. Yeah, guy would have said, could y'all come over here and see this, please? No, it wasn't time for a vote. The axe head swimming on top of the water. And while the axe head swimming, he had to reach over and he laid his hand on it and he put forth his hand and he grabbed it. 
I want to tell you, some of you are just one good prayer away from God doing some things in your life if you would just humble yourself and be obedient when God tells you to do it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Can we just give God praise here for a minute? Pastor Quill, can I see you, brother? Will you come stand with me? Sister, Lady Tennille, will you come stand, with, stand up here with us? Just, I'm not, I ain't going to embarrass you. I wasn't planning on you being up here. God already told me what to do with him. And while you were singing that song, the Lord gave me a scripture for you. How many of you want your pastors to have complete victory in their life? I, I know they've got victory now because I, I know just being around them I know but I'm saying Satan is going to try to attack them before you ever even get in your stride he's going to try to stop, try to stop you uh, Lady Tennille last night was testifying and you may have thought maybe nobody was listening and maybe half the room wasn't but I was listening we were there to celebrate, had a Christian comedian, and she had a great time. I sat right next to them, and we laughed together and had a great time. But I heard what her real heart was. Can I just put my hand right here? I heard what her real heart was when she stood up, and she talked about the tragedies that's happened in her family and the burdens that she's carrying. And she was saying those things because she was letting all of you know even though I'm going through some dark things in my life, I'm still committed to serving this church and standing by my husband and serving all of you. Hallelujah. While you were singing that song, while you were singing that song, there was a psalm that came to me in Psalm 126, and it's for you. And the scripture says, them that go about weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing their sheaths with them. You've got a lady here that's committed to go about bearing, sowing seed in your life. All the while, she's hurting on her inside right now, struggling with things. She could just say, I'm focused on my family, and I'm focused on me and mine. And she's going about weeping this morning, and her heart is heavy, and she's bearing precious seed. But I want to tell you what God does to people like that. He sharpens that axe head in your life. And when you're chopping down those trees, those trees are going to start falling, and things are going to start happening. Hallelujah. And the Bible said they're no doubt going to come again, and they're not going to be weeping now. They're going to be rejoicing and they're going to be bringing their sheaves with them. I want to tell you, sister, hey man, anything you're sowing for God, you're going to reap bountifully. Hallelujah. Give her a hand, will you? Hey man, praise the Lord. You keep going. You keep going bearing that precious seed. You keep weeping bearing that precious seed. And God's going to do some things for you. I hope y'all are accepting this. I told you I'd make myself at home. I hope you're receiving me this morning. I got two of these made. Pastor Quill tried telling you we've spent just a little bit of time together, but I feel like we're brothers from a different mother. I got two axe heads right here. Now, don't, just think, don't fall out with me. Say, well, this guy came over here from Richmond. This dude just came pointing the fingers at us, telling us, trying to straighten us out in one Sunday. No, I, that, is, that isn't my attitude. I'm preaching to you some things that God's been dealing with me about in my life. Is that all right with you? And God laid this on my heart. Pastor Quill is going to own one of these. Hopefully from now until the Lord comes back. And I'm going to have one over there about 80 miles away. And we're going to have the same thing. And God has put us together here on this 25th anniversary. And if the Lord tarries, I hope 25 years from now maybe we'll have a 50th or wherever, whatever's going on, whatever the Lord has, maybe 10 or 5 or whatever, 1. But if you ever see me out in left field somewhere and I'm discouraged and you see that I'm about to give up or you see that I'm off track and I'm not thinking right and I'm not acting right, I need you to remind me of that day 
on August the 7th at Word of Faith Christian Church in Indianapolis that I gave you an axe head that says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. I need you to remind me of that. If you ever see me getting egotistical about what's going on, I'm not thinking right, and I'm not giving God all the glory. I need you to remind me, it's not by might, and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And I'm going to commit that to my brother this morning, that if I ever see him going through something, and I may say in a word of encouragement, or if I ever feel like that he needs to be reminded you, and, you ain't doing any of this on your own. It don't matter how smart you are. I mean, his, this guy, I know he can teach and preach circles around me. I know all that. I don't know why I'm even here this morning. But God knows. But I'm going to make a covenant with him that I'll remind him, Pastor Quill, there may be impossible things going on and there may be some things you've won, but don't forget, brother, it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit says the Lord. <laughs> there's going to be times, my brother, that there's going to be people stand against you. And there's going to be times when you don't understand. If you can read the Bible and study and it just seems like nothing's coming. There's no bread there. It seems like it's empty and it's vain. People that you depended on may turn away. People that, that you had confidence in, they may hurt you. People that like Peter that said, I'll go with you all the way to the death. And before... That night is over, they'll deny you. Remember, brother, it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. This preacher came to Word of Faith Christian Church to tell the wonderful folks here and your pastor, and I want him to maybe put this somewhere that might be meaningful. I'm asking you to put this somewhere that might be meaningful to you. I think this church has amazing potential. I think you guys are just, you don't, I, you don't, maybe you don't even see, maybe that's why God laid it on his heart to call somebody to preach because I don't know anybody in here. I don't know a thing about anybody. And so maybe God's just gonna use that. And I can tell you what I feel in here is that if every one of you collectively would begin to agree together and say it's not going to be by might and it's not going to be by power, but it's going to be by the Spirit of the Lord that we're going to get things done, I believe that God has amazing things for this church. Can we stand all over the house? I'm through preaching. I, I'm sorry that I preach long. I don't know. Is it okay if we just pray together? I know we're going to have communion. On this 25th anniversary, we've got tools in our arsenal. We've got ax handles. We've got the word of God, a sword. We've got everything in our, you know what the devil's tool is this morning? It's been this way for thousands of years. His tool is division. Did you hear me? His tool is division. He'd like for you to get out of source with the person sitting next to you or the person sitting behind you or the one sitting in front of you. And when the enemy starts dividing us, we lose our power. But I'm here to preach the word of faith this morning and this is what I want us to pray together. Not just me praying over you. I'm saying we're gonna pray in agreement. How many of you still believe what our master said? that if any two or three of you would agree, that word agree, has anybody ever been to a symphony? That word agree comes from the Greek word. You check me on this, brother. It means symphoneo. When you agree, have you ever seen that conductor? When he looks over here at this crowd and says, y'all start playing, and they start playing. Then he looks over here and says, now you play. Now you play. And in a moment's time, it's like everybody's playing in complete perfect harmony and symphony. That's what Jesus says. When any two or three of you will begin symphoneo, will agree together, touching anything, you pray to our Father in heaven, and it will be done here on earth. I'm here in agreement today with you, Pastor Quill, and all the good people here.
that we're going to agree that for the years to come, we're going to be able to look back at this 25th anniversary service and say, we made a decision right there as a body that no matter what we do, and I know you already do this. I'm not here teaching you anything. I'm just giving you a refocus this morning that everything we do, it's not going to be my might and it's not going to be by power, but it's going to be by the spirit of the Lord. Father, I thank you today for this church. We are coming together in agreement today, God, as a body. And we're asking you to put your hand upon this congregation. I'm asking you, Lord, to guide the steps of this church. Whatever road you want them to go down, whatever destination you have for them to dwell in, I pray that you order the steps of these people. I pray, Father, that you bless their efforts. A meek and humble people is what I sense here this morning, Lord, and I pray that you'll bless that today, God. That you give them favor, Lord, because they've done things not for vainglory, but they do things, Lord, to glorify you. And I pray that if there's anybody, Lord, this morning, God, that's swinging an axe handle and they've lost their power, I pray, God, that you remind them, put them in a place where we agree together, Lord, to say that it is not by might and it is not by power, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. We thank you and glorify you. Can we give God a hand clap of praise in this sanctuary today? Thank you for letting us be here. I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Quill. Amen, 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 amen. So as he said, it says on this, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, amen. I want to thank uh, Pastor Chad Scow for coming in to uh, bless us today, amen. That was an encouraging word for us, amen. Amen. I know we got another church service, so we're going to be uh, expeditious, but also going to be jubilous at the same time, Amen. So there's multiple ways that you can give while you get your communion element ready to go. There's multiple ways you can give. You can text 317-827-7955. Hold on, let me back up one moment. If there's anybody here in the sanctuary or online that has not given your heart to Christ, this is an opportunity for you to do so. Amen? We are a body of Christ that believes that you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again, and ye shall be saved. Amen? And if you just confess that for the very first time, let us know. Reach out to us at wofccindy.org, and we want to fellowship with you and pray with you and commune with you and give you tools and uh, talk with you about how you can grow in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. So as I said, there's so, several ways you can give. You can text 317-827-7955. You can also mail your check or money order to P.O. Box 26734, Indianapolis, Indiana. 46226. There's also, um, if you got the cash app, dollar sign WOFCC1997, dollar sign WOFCC1997. And the last thing is, uh, what am I saying? The, word, the website, wordoffaithindy.org, wordoffaithindy.org. Amen. And we're doing communion. So we, when we studied in Bible study a few weeks ago, communion is a joyous time. Amen. It's not a somber time. This is a time where it was a festival going on. Amen. So we are excited to participate in this particular event. Amen. Amen. So if you have your, your bread, amen, go ahead and lift your bread. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this chance to participate in something that the Lord Jesus, our Savior himself, participated in. The fact that this represents the body that he gave on the cross for us. Jesus, we thank you, and we ask that you have your way in our lives today and forevermore. Amen. Partake. Now the juice, the wine, the beverage that you may have represents the blood that he shed for us. Because it's that blood that protected the people from the Passover, the Israelites in the Passover, amen, that was on the doorframe. His blood protects us so that we can stand before God, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for this blood that you shed for us. We thank you for allowing this blood to purify us so that we can be white as snow. Have your way in our lives today and forevermore, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. And for the sake of time, we're not going to do our fellowship song, but please fellowship with each other. I ask that you all would just get up, get on your feet. We're going to get out of here so that the next service can get in. Get on your feet. So let the words of